Now, I've interviewed James Lane on the radio before, and then also um, today again on the radio. And uh, I had uh, the uh, uh, Chris Emery, the producer of the film, on it, and they covered a lot of great information. And Holland uh, Van Den Neuenhoff has been uh, obviously here at the office before. Uh, whenever uh, he shot the new film, A Noble Lie, Oklahoma City, 1995. And so he's going to join us here today. He's the writer and researcher for the film. This is the only modern film in the last decade since the 16-year-old tragedy in Oklahoma City at the Alfred P. Murrah Building, the only modern film and the most professional ever made. And it's got many of the victims, many of the eyewitnesses in it. Uh, it really is uh, an incredible achievement, and it's so important now because as we know, those that don't know history are doomed to repeat it. It's so critical right now that we understand that they're gearing up to stage these events again. And they're so arrogant, they've had all these top globalists you know, basically bragging and saying a new Oklahoma City will help us get our agenda through. In the Financial Times of London, you name it, it's super creepy. And so I want to encourage everybody to support the filmmakers, also the InfoWars operation. But more importantly, get a tool to wake up others and to show your friends and family and to go to InfoWars.com and get it. Because if you order by Sunday night, we can guarantee it can be shipped out to you before Christmas. So InfoWars.com or 888-253-3139. And then have viewing parties, show it to your friends and family so that they understand false flag terror. Because if we expose that system, we checkmate the globalists where they cannot continue these Reichstagian, uh, self-inflicted wound operations. So again, James Lane, uh, who is the director, and Holland uh, Vanden Neuhoff um, join us to break this down. And Holland, every time I get you on, I butcher your cool name. Did I get it right the second time? Uh, uh, the first time you got it right, it's Vanden Neuhoff. <laughs> All right, Vanden Neuhoff. So easy when you hear it. I can mm -hmm. barely say Jones. Uh, good to have you here with us, gentlemen. You spent two years making the film. Briefly, uh, Holland... Br Break down what you think is so powerful about the film and why it's so important, and then let's launch into, because I, I got into the question today, who do we know is involved at the highest levels in the cover-up and in the bombing itself, and what are some of the other key points we didn't cover on the radio? Well, what's unique about this film is that we were able to compile the, the, the amazing trail of evidence compiled by independent investigators, police officers, and so forth, and the Oklahoma Bombing Investigation Committee over the past 16 years, package it, and show it to the American people, because all of this information, ha most of it has been reported before, but the mainstream media just won't cover it. Also, we've been able to break new ground with our own investigation. This was half movie making, half investigation. We've talked to witnesses who have never exposed themselves before, who have never talked to the public or put their name out there before to expose this information about the bombing. One thing that we try to do in this movie, Alex, is uh, actually boil it down to the most provable essence. Uh, you know, if not, it would have been a 10-hour movie. Uh, this is going to be the last time that, uh, you know, people are going to be able to hear the actual witness, eyewitness testimony of people that were actually in that building. They said this is the last time they're going to do an interview. We just want a one cohesive package that, it, that encapsulates the entire event. If you know everything about the bombing or nothing, you're going to walk away with something new from this uh, because we, we cover the information that was garnered by the Oklahoma Bombing Investigation Committee. Uh, we cover the official story and then we deconstruct it. Then we get into some of the newer information that folks like Jesse Trinidou, who you've had on the show before, uh, that the information that they've uncovered most recently through FOIA requests and uh, lawsuits that he's done against uh, the FBI and the DOJ. James and then Holland crystallize in two minutes each the key evidence of Oklahoma City and the motive. Well, what we can demonstrate is that uh, the Ryder truck bomb, for one, was not the sole cause of destruction to the Murrah building. That there were other people also involved who assisted McVeigh, and these people were ignored by the U.S. government. That some of these people were U.S. government informants. We have the paper and named them by name. We named some of the agents involved. We named some of the government figures involved. Terry Nichols, in prison, gave an affidavit. And he has nothing to, to gain by lying about his role. He is suffering under two life sentences. He's never leaving jail. He named Larry Potts. Tim McVeigh had told him that Larry Potts, assistant director of the FBI, was in charge of the operation, operation that, that uh, culminated in the Oklahoma City bombing. Louis Free, head of the FBI, is now retired and now in charge of the Penn State investigation, the child abuse scandal going on there, so we can be assured that truth and justice will not, will not be achieved in that matter, as it was not achieved in Oklahoma City. The victims here 
we have shown this movie to the people involved, people who are in the building. They approve of our endeavors. They know. They want the story out. We were lied to about every aspect of the bombing, top to bottom. What is amazing is that they were able to get away with it and that the mainstream media did not cover all of these points in a cohesive package. The American people can see, can see it and say that this is a lie and why is it happening? This can all be... You know, erase all our doubts erased by releasing the security videotapes that surround the Murrah building that showed exactly what happened. Who drove that truck? What exactly happened at the building? 16 years later, they say they don't have them or they're lost or that the tapes they have released, they're all having their tapes changed at the same time, 9.02 a.m., which is ridiculous. The official story and its excuses are very implausible. And if they, once the American people see this, they'll come to understand the true nature of terrorism and question everything that their government says from now on. Absolutely. And then, you know, they say that the, the primary explosive was ammonium nitrate and fuel oil that was in the Ryder truck that day. We've got eyewitness testimony from the survivors of that building. I mean, who are you going to believe, the, the people that were actually there or the people that are trying to push the official story? They said that the building was coming down eight to ten seconds before the truck bomb went off. They thought it was an earthquake. They had enough time to get under their desk before the glass blew in. According to the FEMA report, that blast wave from the truck was moving at 1,300 feet per second. The story just doesn't hold water, according to the, the people that were actually there. Uh, when you add that with the fact that we've got uh, Brigadier uh, General Parton who does an analysis of the, the bombing showing where the additional ordnance would have been placed. You've got Dr. Samuel Cohen, the inventor of the neutron bomb, saying that it would be against the laws of physics, no matter how much ammonium nitrate and fuel oil was used, to bring that building down. We've got a report from Eglin Air Force Base where they constructed a single larger explosive, set it off to a, next to a weaker structure, and it did less damage. It was their conclusion that there had to be additional ordnance inside the building. Uh, we've got Officer Terrence Shakey, real hero that day, saved eight people's lives, but he was on the scene within minutes. One of the hallmarks of an ammonium nitrate and fuel oil bomb is a nitric gas cloud. It, it, be it in Ireland, be it 41 years ago at Sterling Hall, where the ammonium nitrate bo uh, bomb was set off, they, the first 26 responders were hospitalized from the inhalation of nitric gas. That did not happen, and Terry Yakey saving people from the building that day within minutes proves that there was no nitric gas cloud. All right, I want to add a key piece of evidence here, and, and uh, Holland, you, you started to get into it. Not one, not two, but three different high-level FBI agents, including Larry Potts, the deputy director, head of counterterrorism, said he was in Dallas, took a Southwest Airlines flight. Even mainstream media said there were no flights going in that day at that time. Then he said, oh, I drove. Now, this oh, is a guy talking. caught like in a movie. Oh, I did this, I did that. Hotel receipts of him the day before, which people need to look into because he'd been seen. So right there, we know they're on the ground. It fits into what McVeigh and others had said they, they needed to go after the state's rights movement that was centered around Oklahoma. They needed to demonize the growing militia movement. Uh, they needed to kind of cover up what had happened at Waco uh, with the flare footage and the killing there that was coming out in Congress right at that time. Bill Clinton told USA Today on Air Force One right after being elected, he said, I owe my re-election to Oklahoma City. And now their advisors today, we covered on the radio, uh, there's a whole bunch of them, perhaps you can talk to this, uh, are saying we need a new Oklahoma City to blame domestic groups. I mean, that's how dumb they think we are, and we're right up to the same point. And, and, and talk about POTS, but then I want to expand into Eric Holder, who was involved in the cover-up. We've got his emails, thanks to the lawsuits with Jesse Trinidad and others, getting the information through Foyer. But we have Holder running a false flag with tens of thousands of guns into Mexico and drugs back into the U.S. That's now all confirmed. We knew it back in back in January of this year. I mean, this is big medicine. This is big news. If they'd ship thousands of guns into Mexico and kill hundreds, why wouldn't they stage this? I mean, it shows, and then the memos, as ABC, CBS got them, where they said, we're gonna do this to blame the Second Amendment. There's a false flag confirmed. Exactly. Operation Fast and Furious is making the headlines right now where it shows that the ATF is documented along with the FBI with shipping guns to Mexico. That, that has killed thousands of people. And Eric Holder, the Attorney General of the United States, responsible for enforcing the laws of the land back in 1995, he was in charge of the FBI investigation, the Department of Justice investigation into the Oklahoma City bombing and in charge of the cover-up of the murder of Kenneth Trentadue in federal custody. We have his emails where he talks about the Trentadues and Trentadones on how to cover up the story, and the Trenton News story led directly to Oklahoma City. So what you have in the headlines now is Holder implicated right now in a false flag operation that killed thousands, that has killed thousands of people. Yeah, you're right. Let me stop you, because the Mexican government in the U.S. admit over 2,000. You're right. It's not hundreds. It's thousands. And it's at least six cops and Border Patrol on our side. Please continue.
So we have him implicated in, in what is now being reported in the mainstream media as a legitimately a false flag operation. Holder, back in 1995, was in charge of another false flag operation, Oklahoma City bombing. This is why this movie is so timely. We're showing that it's a continual pattern, and if these people are not held accountable for their crimes, they rise up in power and they, they commit even greater crimes. Every time the body count goes up, you know, that's why we have to hold them accountable. And the, this movie is going to be a tool because it's so easy to poke holes through the official story of the Oklahoma City bombing. You know, uh, they've gotten a little more sophisticated, you know, more recently. But uh, the, the, the Oklahoma City bombing story is just so easy to disprove. And the American people haven't seen it in this platform just destroyed from top to bottom. It holds absolutely no water. And what we can conclusively prove with this movie, at the very least, is that the official story is a lie. All right, well, I want to give you guys about a 95 on film review. And I think I can only give one of my films a 95. I mean, I want to be honest with folks uh, here reviewing the film that the information is five stars, 100%. Uh, the quality of the high-def footage has never before been seen. You know, we got the original TV tapes. Everybody just had grainy stuff. Uh, the interviews you got with survivors, all these people, amazing. A few, uh, there's a few areas, and this happens in my films, where it's on-the-fly interviews, the audio is a little hot or a little low. But overall, for your first film, uh, I mean, it's just incredible, and it shows the passion that you guys brought to this. I mean, this is really a powerful film. And I know a lot of... Uh, you know, uh, people uh, out there with a lot of influence watch this show, listen to this show. Listen, none of us are safe if we don't expose this. And, and so, 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 I mean, I just want to say people should get the film. I mean, it's not going to film festivals. It's not going through that whole route. It's right to the public, and it's up to the people for a noble lie uh, to have the effect it should. I mean, if this got seen 35 million times for free online, I know so soon it's going to come out online. Uh, like Obama deception has had, imagine how this would hurt the globalists because their secret weapon is false flag. It is their go-to zeitgeist. We've got to take that weapon away from them. Exactly, and what this movie does is it shows the the methodology of state-sponsored terror. You know, at the time of the Oklahoma City bombing, there was a patriot movement in this country. People were talking about a restoration of the Constitution, the expansion of the police state powers. They were resisting the anti-terrorism legislation that was trying to be passed uh, after the Oklahoma City bombing. It completely silenced anybody that uh, opposed the globalization agenda. You know, uh, even to this day, if you uh, you know oppose the expansion of government power, you're a McVeigh. They use they they love to throw that term out. And then about the time the, the Patriot Movement started to get renewed, that we had 9-11, same, same pattern. It shows uh, it was a pre, Oklahoma City was a precursor to 9-11. I mean, after the event, the Patriot Act passed. You know, everybody was begging, you know, to have their, their, their freedoms taken away. Prior to 9-11, they never would have accepted it. And now we have a new, a new Patriot Movement moving in this country and exposing these events is going to take away their false flag power because, I mean, just like Kurt Haskell, where, I mean, he said that he wanted to make sure sure that uh, the underwear bomber uh, case was exposed because he knew there was something wrong with 9-11. This shows that people in this movement are having an effect and we are taking the tools away from the, the, the New World Order and not allowing them to, to murder people and ride our ashes to uh, their own political ends. Uh, let's, uh, Holland, let's get more into your list there from your research because you guys are there in Oklahoma. You know, some members of your team over a decade just obsessed with this because you should be. It's a mass murder, and the government did it. My God, this is this is incredible, uh, and it's incredible how they've used it undoubtedly to take our liberties and write public memos about how wonderful it was. That's their total arrogance at us because they know the public's naive. It's time to stop being children and admit this. Let's go over some more of the nasty people uh, who were red-handed there, part of the operation. I mean, I mean, you've well, got the governor's brother. What about him publishing a book before the thing where a, what, a, a Tom McVeigh is part of the secret circle or whatever and blows it up? I mean, this is incredible. Some of these facts are just so amazing that they would even pass the plausibility test in a fiction story. We have the brother of the Oklahoma governor at the time of the bombing, Frank Keating, his brother Martin Keating, who is a self-admitted uh, insider in military intelligence, writes a book called Final Jihad. According to the publisher, this book was written in 1992. This is about the time, mind you, that t uh, t uh, McVeigh was being recruited for uh, secret government activities out of the army, according to his own admission. Martin Keating writes a book called Final Jihad, which features a character named Ted McVeigh, who who tries to bomb a federal building in Oklahoma City, a plot that is foiled by a state trooper. 
Now we take that fiction, that so-called fiction, we look at the reality that was presented to us the day of the bombing, is that McVeigh gets arrested after the bombing in Oklahoma by a state trooper. Now, this obviously is not a coincidence, and then no one can defend that. Obviously, there was inside knowledge on the part of the governor's office. We have talked to people who have traced a call from the governor's office to Walter Reed Army Hospital. By the way, let me stop you. It did come, they wrote it in 92, came out in like 94. And yes. what's weird is after I made a big deal about this like eight years ago on Wikipedia and on, um, but I own a copy. There's one here in the office. I just happened to mention this as a factoid. because So I have the one published in, in 94. They come back out with it and say original publishing date, 1996. I mean, that shows again that what they're doing. It's so amazing that even on Amazon, they changed the date. Well, they always try to to you know cover their tracks, and that you know that was something that we saw here in the uh, the Oklahoma City case is you know the early hours the the truth always comes out in the media. It's within within hours they get control of the story and start pushing you know whatever cover up they're going to to perpetrate. In Oklahoma, only one news station maintained any integrity for a few months, which was Channel Four, and uh, then the New York Times came in, bought bought the local news station, fired the program director and the lead reporter, and then any uh, information that contradicted the official story was. Completely silenced. The local media tried to do a good job here, and we could see firsthand how the feds came in, how the New York Times came in, and squashed all independent inquiry into the bombing. Channel 4 was interviewing John Doe number two witnesses, talking about what the tapes really showed, talking about the second bombs, talking about accomplices, then all of a sudden it was just shut down. And let's expand on that. Well, Channel 4 started basically the original inquiry into the bombing. The first questions raised were why the office of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms in the building was empty. The ATF, which had started the Branch Davidian raid two years before to the day, was the supposed target of the attack, but their office is empty. One of the men who, res who responded to the bombing who was trying to look for his wife. He talked to an ATF agent who told him that they had been paged, notified by their pagers, <coughs> to not come in to work that day. Well, that's that right, and Terrence Yankee and some of the doctors involved said within a minute after after it happened, they were in full gear demanding, patch me up. I was up in there. And they're like, no, you weren't. Terrence Yakey and Dr. Plumley were asking questions about when they showed up, why there were certain federal officials there on site. FBI officials, too. The FBI headquarters is several miles away. There were people there already, and yet Terrence Yakey was four blocks away. He was the first person to respond. A lot of questions raised. We show in this movie that the ATF story about what they were doing in that building is a lie we name. An and they practiced months before in New Mexico blowing up a rider truck. I mean, there is no end to these people. I mean, there is really no end to how evil they are. My Operation God, to, yeah. it, it is just unspeakably wicked. But, but, you know, talking about the censorship, buying up that TV station and, and everything else that we saw and changing the publishing date on this book, that just shows you how scared they are of info. This info didn't have power. If the global terrorists, the social engineers, were invincible, they wouldn't care. The fact well, that, I mean, seeing now military on the streets, checkpoints, going to arrest citizens, training that Oklahoma City investigators, including state reps, are terrorists, you get the manuals. I mean, it looks cartoonish because it's so over the top, but it's really happening. But you look at Hitler, Stalin, Mao, that looks cartoonish. Why'd they put up with it? Well, it's the authorities. So, so I mean, seeing everything happen today as it all comes true, this just adds to the urgency. Uh, your views on that? Well, it's it's very uh, timely because as we talk about the NDAA bill passing with the indefinite detention of American citizens without trial, even if they're found innocent, you say, well, okay, who are they going to who are they going to round up? W through Operation Defuse, documents, internal fusion center documents were leaked to us that show OKBombing.net, which was uh, the website originally ran by the Oklahoma Bombing Investigation Committee, a state representative, Charles Key, is listed under domestic terrorism. I mean, this shows the people that they want to round up because. These institutions' primary goal above anything else is self-preservation, and they have to silence anybody that has the audacity to expose the crimes of the global oligarchy. By the way, we've, we've talked to investigative journalists, Wayne Madsen and others, who've talked to high-level federal informants, Judge Roll, and I've seen other connections uh, showing this, Judge Roll, who got shot in the Gifford situation, and I heard this at the time, I was like, no, that, you know, that was about a gun running thing and he was going to expose it, was meeting with her secretly in kind of a transpartisan deal. But now there's evidence that that was really a hit. 
uh, to basically cover up what was happening. But I mean, there it is. Just six, eight months ago, they were saying it's a conspiracy theory. We didn't ship guns into Mexico. We only watched them at gun shops. Then it turned out they ordered them to do it. That was just a cover to blame the Second Amendment. They were really shipping 18 wheelers of guns in, cocaine back in. And now it's all there. New York Times, El Paso Times, Chicago Tribune, we've all covered it here in probably 15 reports. Well, I mean, you see how the media is, is controlled this way. The same week we released our movie, Newsweek Magazine, released on its uh, internet organ, The Daily Beast, a, an article that was supposed to be an expose of Operation PACCON in the early 90s. PACCON may have been the genesis of the Oklahoma City bombing. PACCON was an operation the FBI and the ATF undertook to infiltrate every so-called dissident group in the country. Yeah, no, McVeigh was part of that, going to every gun show, the Davidians, every event to, to scope out who they wanted to blame for the attack. But when you look at the Newsweek article when it was finally released, that all mention of Tim McVeigh, Andy Strasmeyer, who we have cited in the Murrah building with bombs, and Operation Pacon have been excised from the final version of the article, and that has been proven because the original article was leaked out. So they are still exercising the cover up here. They do not want they do not want Pacon getting out because that was where where Oklahoma City may have been born because it can prove that they were watching McVeigh, that McVeigh was surrounded by government informants from day one. No, no, exactly. Exactly. They always use a, another operation as the cover umbrella, just like with the 7-7 attack in England. It's admitted the government ran drills of the exact bus, exact trains attacked at the exact same place at the exact same time. It's something like 20-something trek a gillion. That's exactly. billions of times all the s grains of sand in the world that that would happen. 9-11, every one of these events, so that if other government agencies bust the intercriminal group doing it, they say, oh, it's just a drill like 9-11 with Tripod 2, with Giuliani, the attacks on the towers. Yes, and we actually have uh, a Senate aide that told Charles Key that it was uh, that they had information that this was a sting operation that had gone bad. Well, you look that's at that. Like that's like World a, Trade that's Center, a, where they cook the bomb, train the driver. The informant says you're going to let it go forward, knows they're setting him up. He records the FBI, Ahmad Salam, saying go ahead and exactly. let it happen. Same deal. He was smart enough, though, to record him. So we have New York Times, CBS News. Yes, the government allowed it to take place. No, they didn't allow it to take place. They did it. Yeah. And what happens with this is even the, the agents that were not necessarily involved in taking the operation live, they are complicit in the cover up to preserve them, the, the, themselves and their pensions. You know, so it, it gets the whole institution involved in the cover up. Well, we see the mechanism for a false flag operation is that they take an existing operation, they insert a few key personnel, and they turn it to their own ends. The Oakland City bombing was originally supposed to be a big publicity stunt. That that bomb was supposed to explode the early uh, the previous night and destroy an empty building. That's what they were waiting on—a big PR stunt. That's not. And that's why McVeigh about. got so mad. We're told he didn't want to <clears> kill kids. Exactly. And then once they messed up. And it blew up and killed over 100 people, almost 200 people. Now everyone goes into cover-up mode for what they think is a tremendous foul-up. But it's not. It actually did go along according to the plan. And that's how they get the cover-up installed. It's not like every agent on the street is covering up the fact that the FBI blew up the Murrah building. No, it's, it's declassified it's that Lee Harvey Oswald had a top security clearance at a YouTube base in Japan, was CIA. The documents have now been declassified. And they set him up. And he's like, I'm a patsy. And they're like, you're not going to talk. Boom. With a guy they know's already got cancer, and Jolly and West McVeigh's doctors involved with that, who's in the congressional hearings, folks. I know this sounds crazy, but you got to look it up yourself as the number two guy under Ewing Cameron for mind control programs, MK Ultra. I mean, this is you cannot make up how weird this is. Yeah, and people would question, well, if he was a government agent working, why would he not expose the people that were higher up? And whenever Dr. Jolly and West comes on the scene uh, consulting with the defense team, you know, immediately after the bombing, this guy's worked with Saran Saran, Jack Ruby, uh, Patty Hearst, you know, any of the, these big events to, to, you know, and then all of a sudden now they, they're silent on what happened. You know, I think that's a good possibility as to why McVeigh wasn't talking after the event. And then you see that Dr. Jolly and West actually passes the torch to his protege, Wendy Painting Uncovered Information, where uh, his protege John Smith took over with McVeigh. That guy is now in charge of psychology at Guantanamo Bay. Which they admit has another base within it where they do mind control studies. That's even Washington Post. And then they release those guys to become Al-Qaeda leaders leading the Libya attack.
Exactly. It's kind of a, the self-perpetuating cycle. They create these zombie killers in these in these uh, mind control camps. What we see at Guantanamo Bay is that there's you have Camp X-ray, and then you what ha you have what the guards call Camp Nowhere, which is a map that's not a camp that's not on the map where the real heavy stuff goes down. So I mean, this well, they admit is, that CIA doctors. Exactly. Right, and they use uh, the three Ds: dependency, debilitation, and dread. This was pioneered by you know you and Cameron and, and Johnny and West. They're using that at Guantanamo Bay, and I think this is probably why they're not interested in old, older so-called Al Qaeda people being put they in there. They want kids. That's why kids. That's why it came out again in the Washington Post and in Operation Jawbreaker that they wanted 12-year-old kids in Afghanistan. That's who they mainly were grabbing because they can purely program them, and these are going to be the terrorists they're going to unleash on America. And for those that don't know, there's History Channel specials even, admitting that Ewing Cameron, Jolly and West's boss, would grab foster children and put them on hallucinogens for a year straight, frying their brain with audio recording who they were and keywords to get food, to stop the dread, putting them on PCP, dancing around in devil outfits, terrorizing five-year-old girls. I mean, th we, this country is run by absolute psychopathic killers. And the government, I mean, it came out in Guantanamo Bay. I'm not even going to say on air what they do to those people. I mean, it is, it is, it is just, it is unbelievable, man. And they're all going to hit us with jihadi attacks. And then they'll come and say, we've got to stick our hands down your children's pants because we're fighting al-Qaeda, who publicly works for them. Exactly. I mean, what we see there is that they, they create the actual problem. This is the false flag attack. They create the actual problem. And if people have a hard, hard time believing that this government or a faction of this government could have pulled off Oklahoma City, look at what the CIA has been doing to countries overseas for decades, fostering coups, putting in military strongmen that killed thousands of people, doing fake bombings under Operation Gladio in Europe and Italy. The Italian Senate has accused the CIA of, of uh, being involved in the Bologna train bombing station, uh, Bologna train station bomb. No, no, their former president, people. who was the head of, of their intelligence agency at the time, said he was involved in it. And he said 9-11's an inside job. That's the big Italian papers. You're so absolutely when they, right. When they, when they bring that mechanism home to affect change here, why should we be surprised? Like we said, if you don't hold them accountable, they will continue to do their crimes and make them greater. What incentive do they have to stop? None. And the only reason we're still alive is because if they kill us, it highlights everything we've said, exclamation points. They still may do it. But once you understand these are cold-blooded killers who even set up their own agents who are going to bomb a empty building, and then McVeigh throws a fit, and we've talked to the witnesses, you know, family and others, lawyers. As you said, he just, I'm not going to blow kids up. Forget this. They're like, they'd already psychologically pegged that he was Dudley Do-Right was going to do that. They were all ready. I mean, they, they're like, because it's run by 170 IQ psycho psychiatrist. This whole thing is run by them. But they've had decades to hone their technique. I mean, MK Ultra started in the 1950s uh, to under, under the 1960s under that name, then it changed and it went underground. I mean, they've had decades to and hone their technique. And they profiled McVeigh. They profiled Lee Harvey Oswald. McVeigh's military records from special forces were never released. His psychological records were never released. And what medical records we do have are very disturbing. He was going to the doctor um, at last count over a hundred times in just three years in the military. That is highly unusual for someone in the combat arms. Highly unusual for someone like McVeigh who claims never have any health problems. He's going to the dentist once a week for over a year, claims he has no dental problems. What is he doing? What is he going under? We don't know and they have never released all those records in full. In fact, those records on McVeigh were sealed on orders of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Exactly. It's national security everywhere. Gentlemen, great job. Look forward to talking to you again and interviewing some of the people that are uh, in your uh, film. Amazing job. Available at InfoWars.com. People got to get this video out to everybody. Look forward to talking to you soon. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, folks, that is it for this split edition of InfoWars Nightly News with Mike Adams in the first half, and I came in in the second half. Great job to the crew. God willing, we'll see you back Sunday live on the radio, 4 to 6 p.m., and back Monday on the radio show and then the nighttime show. Why do we work so hard? Because we know terrorists are running the government and nobody's safe. It's like that old analogy of the old 40s you know, adventure movies where the, where the explorer, the archaeologist, kind of the remake of Indiana Jones is in the, in the temple and the ceiling's coming down to kill you with spikes. You've got to find the lever to stop it or get out of there. I mean, it's not like, God, you're brave. You're trying to get out of this. Brave? No, I'm not brave. I realize our society has no future. I guess I'm brave that I'm not a coward who only thinks about myself, and if I grovel, maybe I'll get a few more years out of this. There's no point even going forward if we don't beat these people. You think they stop blowing up federal buildings?
They're putting stuff in the water, the food they've been caught. It's all public, the vaccines, the Rockefeller Foundation. We've shown it to you. All you've got to do is flip the switch and stop being naive. The film's are Noble Live, available at InfoWars.com. And they could kill all of us, but this information will live on. And that's what's important. Expose false flag terror. Expose the New World Order. Order the film. Give the gift of truth. Order it by Sunday night. Guaranteed before Christmas delivery under that tannin bomb to wake somebody up. Give the gift of truth. Expose the false flag because they're getting ready to stage more and blame it on domestic groups. They'll flip the whole Al-Qaeda brainwashing onto domestics. You already see the beta testing, the preconditioning. It's here. All right, I'm Alex Jones signing off from the front lines of the info war.